Today we have a very special video. We are unboxing my new M2 MacBook Pro 14 inch laptop. I just bought this yesterday. I saved it to open it today on camera. So let's just get into it. I use my laptop for three main things. One, browsing the web. Two, cozy gaming like The Sims 4. And three, editing YouTube videos on Final Cut Pro. So let's see if it lives up to the hype and put it to the test. Now let's open up this laptop and talk about my first impressions. The packaging on this laptop was very luxurious. It's almost a little too luxurious because I end up holding onto the packaging because I feel like it's too much of a waste to throw out or recycle. The visual appearance of the laptop is very sleek, very nice, as it always is with a lot of Apple products. Apple's industrial design is on another level that, in my opinion, does not have any close rivals. I got the classic silver look. I am absolutely obsessed with the hardware design on the laptop. Look at this hinge. I mean, that hinge tolerance is so satisfying. I love how this laptop gently snaps closed and I'm also a big fan of the keyboard buttons in Apple devices. I love how they feel, I love how they sound. The M2 14 inch MacBook Pro does not come with touch bar, but it does come with touch ID, which makes it really easy and secure to log into your laptop. I personally do not care for the touch bar. If I have the option to have buttons on the touch screen or physical buttons, I'm always gonna pick the physical button. Something interesting about this design is it looks like they've now painted the background of the keyboard black when it used to be just a natural aluminum color. I really like the fact that it used to be the aluminum color because it really showed off the fact that the base of the laptop was machined from one block of aluminum, but this is a minor design change that I'm not going to throw a fit over. This laptop has a 14.2 inch display. The screen does, however, have this little notch at the top, which I thought I would find really annoying, but turns out I barely notice it when I'm using the laptop, and I think a huge part of that is because the mouse can actually go behind this notch and doesn't have to go around it. There are speakers on either side of the keyboard on the laptop. The speakers are laser cut into the aluminum. They look very nice, and the sound quality on the M2 MacBook Pro is very good. Speakers get pretty loud, but I am impressed by the sound quality. The laptop is a little bit heavy. The laptop is 3.5 pounds compared to the MacBook Air at 2.7 pounds. I am very satisfied with the ports on this device. On the left hand side, it has that MagSafe charging port. I'm very happy that they kept the MagSafe charging port. That way when I'm charging, I'm not using up one of my USB-C ports. It has two USB-C slots and a headphone jack port, which I love because when I'm doing video editing, if I'm ever recording a voiceover, a lot of my mics have headphone jack ports and it's just nice not having to use a converter. On the right-hand side, you have an HDMI port. You also have another USB-C port on the right-hand side and I like that this is spread out so I can plug in multiple devices and have it be a bit more spread out. I also love, love, love the fact that it has an SD slot. I get that with a MacBook Air, you can get converters and extenders, but with the price I'm paying, I like it when my laptop has as many ports as possible because it's just more convenient and less of a hassle to be able to plug things directly into your laptop without having a million converters dangling off the side. Overall, my initial impressions were very positive. It's a beautiful laptop, great speakers, great ports. Love the size of the screen. It is a little heavy and there are some minor details that if I had a magic wand, I would change like the background of the keyboard, but overall, very satisfied. Before before we decide whether we like this laptop or not, we have the most important test to run, which is seeing how the laptop performs in Final Cut Pro and in gaming, like The Sims 4. When I go to edit a video in Final Cut Pro, I use an external Seagate hard drive to store all my files. This Seagate hard drive I have has a USB connector on one end, so I did have to use a converter to plug into my laptop. I'm not a big fan of the long converters that like plug into your laptop, have a cable, and then have this conversion strip with all the ports because it's just inconvenient and a hassle. So I have this single converter block that works very nicely, and I got it from Amazon. I will have it linked below. Once I plugged that in, I pulled up Final Cut Pro and started editing a video to test it out. We have a very special video. We are unboxing my new M2 MacBook Pro 14 inch laptop and I was very pleasantly surprised. I edited for hours. My laptop was fully charged and without 
being plugged in. I edited for about three hours before I stopped and I still had over 50% of my battery left. With every laptop, my battery life will probably get shorter and shorter over time, but as a starting point, I am very satisfied with how long it lasted. Long battery life is great because a lot of the coffee shops in the city I live in don't have outlets at every table. So it's really nice to be able to fully charge my laptop and be able to work for at least a couple hours without having to charge it. And it's also just really nice to be able to move around your apartment, to sit on the couch, get in a comfy position, and not have to worry about this long charging cable being plugged into your laptop. I typically edit videos between 10 to 20 minutes long. I did not experience any lagging while editing. I do use some minor color grading. I apply transitions. I layer video clips on top of each other. I apply masks. I would say I do an intermediate level of editing. This laptop was able to handle that perfectly. Finally, I also test ran playing The Sims on this laptop and long story short, it ran really well. Play on the second to highest graphic settings that you can change within the Sims game. It did not lag, the graphics were good. I have mods and custom content installed in my game. As of right now, I have 7.4 gigabytes of mods in my Sims installed. I have a little less than half of all the expansion packs, game packs, and kits that The Sims 4 offers. Before I bought this laptop, I was seriously considering three laptops from Apple. I was considering the M2 MacBook Air, the M2 MacBook Pro, 13 inch and the M2 MacBook Pro 14 inch. The main differentiated factor between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pros is, is that the MacBook Pros are a little bit thicker and they have room for a cooling fan. Because of that, I ended up going with the MacBook Pro because I am running some heavier workloads on my laptop, such as editing videos on Final Cut Pro and playing The Sims 4. If you're someone that's gonna be using your laptop for heavier workloads like video editing and gaming, I would probably recommend having a laptop with a fan. This will let you run your laptop with those more intense applications longer without slowing down your application. I saw some articles that you could buy the MacBook Air and buy an external cooling surface for your laptop to help it stay cool if you're using more intense applications. But to me, that kind of defeats the purpose of a laptop, which is its portability and convenience. So I ended up going with the MacBook Pro. Now that I know I'm purchasing a MacBook Pro, it came down to deciding between the 13 inch and the 14 inch. Personally, I don't know why the MacBook Pro 13 inch exists. There is only a hundred dollar difference between the MacBook Air and the 13 inch MacBook Pro, which is not negligible, but after my research, I found that the MacBook Air actually has better speakers, a bigger screen, a higher resolution screen, a better camera, and is lighter in weight. So all you're getting is a cooling fan, but at the cost of all those other features, and you're paying an extra $100 for that. The M2 MacBook Pro 13-inch laptop also has the touch bar, so if you're really, really into the touch bar, that might be a deciding factor to lean towards the MacBook Pro 13-inch instead, but the touch bar is not something that I needed. From what I've seen, the same functions the touch bar can do can be done with buttons and I actually prefer physical buttons than buttons on a touch screen. If it came down to the MacBook Pro 13 inch or the MacBook Air, I would probably actually pick the MacBook Air. In the end, as you all know, I went with the M2 MacBook Pro 14 inch laptop. This laptop has a new Apple M2 chip and compared to the MacBook Air, it has more CPU, GPU, and memory than the MacBook Air. And it also has that cooling fan that will enable me to game and edit videos for longer without slowing me down. When you go to buy the 14 inch M2 MacBook Pro, you actually have three options to choose from. And it ranges from $1,999 to $3,099. For budget reasons, I went with the base model, the $1,999 version. If you're thinking about a new laptop, let me know which way you're leaning. Otherwise, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, a comment, or subscribe for more. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.